now did we hear it right last week did that was like did abm actually were they sending people down there prior to him even coming down here just to start talking nil i mean how much of a role does nil start to play obviously in these big time recruits and how is that changing the game of the recruiting now yeah, so from what I've heard, ABM did have a representative go down to Texas to meet with him to kind of prime him on his options for NIL should he come to Nebraska. Mm -hmm. That part, to be totally honest, that was kind of new information because I, I don't think many of us realize that these companies could go down and essentially make pitches to guys ahead of time mm -hmm. um, before they even came to campus for, for visits. So that was really interesting just to see that kind of happen. But it also highlights a bigger point, which is this whole world of NIL is so new and changing and evolving at all times. Like, I don't think many people have a great grasp of what's happening with this. Um, I think that ends up kind of playing to the advantage of schools and players for wanting to get more money, though, because with, while mm -hmm. things are a little bit vague, you can find your ways around things and find ways to get things done. Um, and we'd be naive to think that they weren't, right? Like, mm -hmm. if it was happening before, it's definitely happening now um, when it comes to NIL. Now, I do think that it plays a big role though and it kind of there's a sliding scale though depending on the prospect i think with transfer guys you're going to see it talked to see and hear it talked about a lot more just because those guys are a little bit more seasoned they've been through the game as far as you know college football and they know what's happening and they've seen the landscape change right and so whereas a high school player um is still a lot more un unsure about how nil is going to even be effective for him uh going into college football right um mm -hmm. but it is definitely part of the pitch and it, it now it, i would say last year in talking to prospects it it came up some now almost every time i talk to a prospect nil comes up like yeah. I, I think that it's, it's a really hot topic right now uh amongst prospects and i think that for in for a positive for nebraska as well though it, it, like it gets out there the thing about casey thompson saying you know you can make six mm -hmm. figures as a starter here in nebraska you start to hear the whispers about the different deals that he and other players have like that definitely the word gets out there um to these prospects um so that ends up being good marketing for the program as well you know, something else, too, in the hockey, I'm sorry if I'm, if I'm interrupting you here. No, go for it. Something that, that uh, Matt and I were discussing uh, with a buddy of ours is we were walking around the stadium before our tour on Friday, and um, I had brought up that I had read a couple articles on um, basically schools being able to play payers, players for performance in the academic mm -hmm. areas, right? And I had said, well, they listed there was about 25 schools or 30 schools or so that had been listed that were paying the players to do that. But Nebraska wasn't one of them. Right. That was on Friday. Today, uh, Parker Gabriel, I think, um, over at Journal Star, uh, wrote an article talking about the uh, media deal that they had. But then part of his article was also that Nebraska has announced now that they're going to be paying these kids. It's just amounts of like, I think it's like $5,980 mm -hmm. for whatever reason. But then they can also put in other parts, I think, in there where if a player wins an award, like a league award or something like along those lines that they can, you know, like um, first team All-American or one of those that they can also incentivize that. So it's a kind of an interesting dynamic that now the schools can be involved with that sort of thing too. And Nebraska is only one of like, you know, 30 some odd schools that are actually doing that. At this point. Yeah, it was really, it's wild. First of all, they announced that right before kickoff of the spring <laughs> game. And that's why people didn't know. Um, so don't be bad <laughs> that you just saw that. Uh, well, I, well, I knew that's why I was yeah, talking like about it. I said, right, it. I said don't be surprised thing. if they, if they're doing this. Soon, yeah. See, right? you, uh, you were clairvoyant on that when you yeah. saw it. Coming. <laughs> um, but it, yeah, it was, it was just weird timing that they announced it. And then Trev Alberts did speak about that at halftime up in the press box um, as well. Um, so he gave some comments on it too, and about Nebraska wanting to make sure that they stayed on the forefront of those types of things, which is extremely smart. Like I, I would say that that is a really smart thing. Thing. Um, and I did see the thing about where there was like 25, 30 schools that were going to participate in that because that academic program is voluntary. Like school, you don't have to do that. But you for two things. One, you've got to have the money uh, to be able to do it. And it won't surprise you, though, to find out that I think half of like half of those schools that were initially doing it 
are, were in the SEC. So mm. it ends up being a thing where, you know, basically it's kind of the rich get richer um, and want to continue to find ways to funnel money to the players. Hey, it's in the rules. Um, go mm. ahead and do it. But I do like the fact that they tried to tie academics into it in some way, shape or form. I think that it's not it can't be tied directly to GPAs, though, because there's some legality um, issues there. Uh, but they are trying to find different ways. But if you think about it, you know, you mentioned the, the fifty nine hundred dollar um, stipend there for that. If you get that and you get another smaller NIL deal and you also already get your scholarship stipend, like you can start to mm -hmm. put together a nice little honeypot of money, especially for a college kid that also, you know, in some cases has free housing, depending on if they're staying on campus or not. Um, but then also has the education as well. Like that, you can start to put together a nice package, even for guys that aren't star players, or star level players like a Casey Thompson is. Mm -hmm. And and you said, you know, it's important to note this, Redcasters, that it's in the rules now. And this is the crazy thing. It sounds, I, I feel dirty talking about it sometimes, <laughs> but a couple things. Yeah, because the old school in me comes out and it's like, ah, oh, you know, the, all this change. But this is nothing new either. I mean, we can go back to SMUs of the 1980s and, oh, and guys working at yeah, guys working at car lots and, and making crazy amounts of money in 1988, right? I mean, the, the money's always been there. Now it's just it's literally out in front. People know about it and it is legal. It's also important to note right now that NIL doesn't go through schools. NIL is yeah. exterior to schools. Now that doesn't mean that that athletic departments, and we've heard this from multiple people that have been on this show that that um that Trev is, you know, preparing for a day where it could be brought in. Now that could be three or four years down the road and there's no guarantee yet, but at least it's something that you prepare for because um, things are changing so fast. It's just, it's crazy. Me, you, you talked about Greg a year ago, you're talking to players and they weren't bringing it up as much as they do now. And it's like a year ago, it didn't exist yet. And now right. we're writing the rules kind of as we go along. This is the first, the first spring that we've ever, you know, had a, a an NIL company sending out people to go and talk to a recruit before they even come here. And there's nothing again, there's nothing wrong with it. It just, I, I guess you do this professionally. Do you ever just take a moment and sit back and go, what in the heck is going on here? Or like, how, you know, how do you keep up with everything? Oh boy, all the time. Um, I think that like the, the <laughs> nets were just very that's a, for a multitude of reasons. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's a lot. Um, and it, the changes are have been swift, and it's of course because it's dealing with the NCAA. Um, it is not always the clearest. Um, what is what the rules are? The rules are sometimes different um, state to state. Like it mm -hmm. is, ju it just becomes it's really difficult. And and something that will always stick with me is last summer. Um, I was with the thing with the, the Warren Academy with former. Oscar Steve Warren, where they had a guy uh, from Open Doors come in and talk to parents about NIL, right? As it was really ramping up um, that summer, and people were really starting to just have a lot of questions about it. And it was just murky about how it was going. And you should have seen the, the parents were so confused about what it was. <laughs> and that always sticks with me, though, because I'm like, well, if the parents are this confused, what do the athletes think? Right. Like, and so it just always, and so there's always this change. Um, you just have to stay on top of it the best you can. Um, but yeah, the, the days of, of old school college football are over. Um, I would be curious to see if they ever do decide to bring NIL in house where schools can have direct um, ties to what's happening. I, I wonder how much that actually would change um, just because it's always, it's interesting to me that, these companies and these collectives that are starting to build up and it's not just that Nebraska, it's all over mm -hmm. the place, right? You saw, I saw another one, Alabama um, announced that they had a collective going today. And then if you Alabama? don't know what a collective is, no yeah, way. I mean, no way, right? If you don't know <laughs> what that is, um, it, it's essentially where a group of companies can pool their money together into the collective and the collective can then disperse those funds on behalf of those other companies. Um, and, and so it makes it easier to then pitch those prospects because you don't say, hey, when you come here, you're going to have a hundred thousand dollar deal um from restaurant x we already have that money in the pot for you like it just kind of cuts that one step out which makes it a lot easier um mm. but you're just going to continue to see more and more of that um as schools really lean into the nil world and when when you say state to state too one of the things that we heard from from a friend of ours was um he basically like in Florida, right? I think is one state where obviously, cause there's no rules in Florida anyway. I mean, it's, hey, it's, it's just, Florida. it doesn't matter what, what, what path in life you're on in Florida. There's no rules. Um, I think they can actually endorse 
a, a specific, um, you know, collective, right? Like, oh, that's it. That no, that they can that or yeah, that, that they're they allowed can. to do just that. They're one. allowed, yeah, they're allowed to endorse like yeah. one. And so they say, here's the collective we work. That was with Tyler. Everyone. That was Tyler. That I know. I was actually. trying not to name drop. And then, um, <laughs> okay. and we've then, already uh, named him. Well, that's true. And then, uh, <laughs> and then, uh, but when, but he said, obviously, in Nebraska, that's not allowed. Right. So right. that's that's the state to state part. I was just trying mm-hmm. to clarify that for our listeners, too, because like some states like that. Now, of course, I wouldn't be surprised if Alabama, you could, you know, say which collective you're working with mm-hmm. as well. You know, I and I would I would guess that a lot of the SEC schools probably, you know, in state probably could do that. Um I wouldn't be surprised to see some legislation come through in Nebraska where they're like, you know, I go right ahead and well, do that, you know, but I, I'd write it if I could. I mean, if yeah, right. write it, anything <laughs> but, to legally help the program, I, right, I have no yeah. problem with. Well, I'm just glad that Alabama is able to do this because it's good that they can finally catch a break. So. Finally, yeah, I'm break you're down. happy for them to be able to land a player or two, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, you know, cause those guys, man, they've been struggling, you know, <laughs> just down on their luck. I heard, I heard last week they had to settle for a four star guy. <laughs> yeah, it's too bad. It is too bad for the you know of the program. It, it does bring up the, the the point too about you know we asked the question. I think when we had Sippel on, I asked him, you know, how would some former Husker coaches do in today's world in in the world of NIL and transfer mm-hmm. portal? And I just you know I, it was kind of funny. I threw out Bo, and he goes, "Oh, that'd be a disaster." But then and then he was he took it back a little bit. But then I asked um, I asked him Osborne, and he gave kind of the cliche answer, but it was the right answer the great coaches adapt to whatever the rules of the time are, and they would find a way to make it work. Nick Saban is, if not the greatest of all time, certainly one of, and probably is. And look at what, you know, he, he will take the rules of today, which were different than 25 years ago when he coached, and he will just be the best coach at NIL and he'll be the best coach at the transfer portal. Right. I mean, that's just the way it is now. Well, if you think about it, like when there's a few things that, to give us an example of that with Saban specifically, remember he railed against the proliferation of spread offense mm-hmm. and then he adopted the spread offense and won championships. He came out against the transfer portal and then he's been great. Um, he had an all American wide receiver last year, Jameson Williams, that he got out of the transfer portal. He did yep. the same thing with NIL. And it was funny because I remember when I saw it on Twitter that he was kind of against nil and was saying be careful what you wish for people were saying that's really just a warning shot that hey if we're going to be able to do this we're going to do it better than anybody so Mm -hmm. be careful what you wish for and then lo and behold we look up and we see that bryce young might have a seven figure nil deal like Mm -hmm. (laughs) he definitely lets you know ahead of time but yeah the great coaches adjust like that's that's what's going to happen yeah and the great programs adjust and it's one of those things in husker nation redcast nation get behind all this stuff don't don't fight it is that Nebraska has always been successful, not because of our great population and, and the mountains and the oceans that are next to us. We're on the forefront, whether it was weight training and, and strength mm-hmm. and conditioning 35 years ago or the first time having you know Husker Vision screens in, in a stadium you know, from, a, from a technology standpoint. Today, it's NIL and it's, it's Portal. And, and those are brand new things. I know just from the last couple of years, but those are the things that if you can be great at that, that is going to assist your program right now. And so I think it's just really important from from a fan base, from the, obviously the program itself. You mentioned Open Doors having former Huskers like Adi Kunlik and Blake Lawrence helping leading that, uh, you know, having Huddle it right downtown. I mean, every advantage you can possibly do. Look at what Oregon's done over the years with Nike. Didn't hurt them, you know. And and so you take every advantage you can, especially when you are that state with uh, 2 million people right in the middle of the, of the country. 